My name is Sweet Deet and you have found my channel. Congratulations. Here we talk about all kinds of things like music and current business news and strategy and the occasional guitar lesson too, all wrapped into one channel right here. So kick your feet back and uh, pour yourself a cup of coffee and, you know, relax. Today we're talking about Ticketmaster and we're talking about how they're going to check your COVID status or your vaccine status more specifically when you come into a concert when we can all get back together and it's a little creepy. I'll explain right now. One of the leading pharmaceutical companies uh, called Pfizer that is doing a lot of COVID research on the vaccine they just recently announced that they have a 90% success rate with this new vaccine, so that's really good. So in preparation and in light of this news, Ticketmaster released some information that's really interesting as to how they plan to let people back into concerts safely without spreading the virus. It looks like this plan will hinge on three different entities. One, the Ticketmaster digital app. Information from third-party health companies like Clear Health, which I did not know that Clear got into the health game. Pretty interesting. IBM's Digital Health Pass will be involved in this also. And distributors of this vaccine like LabCorp and CVS Health Clinic. So, here's how it's going to work. After you purchase a ticket, they're going to ask for your vaccine information, which usually lasts for a year. Or have an active test that within 72 hours or so, you have not been diagnosed positive for coronavirus. So once the test is complete, then you're gonna ask somebody like IBM or CVS that has your information to then send it to Ticketmaster so they can authorize that information. If you didn't take a test or take the vaccine, you're not allowed to come to a concert, even if you bought a ticket. Ticketmaster says they're not going to store any of your health data. They just want to know whether you're positive or negative. And they just want to get it from a trusted source that they believe in or have, you know, a whole procedure with that, you know, will move things along pretty quickly. They say the main role for the third party company is to, to encrypt the data that you send from them to Ticketmaster. So Ticketmaster washes their hands of basically everything and uh, your information is protected. To this day in 2020, the FDA has never involved themselves in a third-party sort of collaborative effort um, to pass along data that's encrypted to anyone. So this is brand new territory we're talking about here. Ticketmaster sees himself on the forefront of all this, and Mark Jovich, the president of Ticketmaster, says that airline industries and other industries that require rapid testing Having this third-party company is going to really help operations move forward in a very quick and consumer-friendly way. Ticketmaster says there's two technologies that are going to really help scale this whole program, so let's dive into that. The first is digital ticketing, which will then tie a particular person to its identity to their account, so they'll be able to get rid of paper tickets and those type of things. Secondly, Ticketmaster is planning to deploy what they call a smart event system, which will allow for social distancing and staggered concert arrivals, so not everybody showing up at the gate at once, stuff like that. And you also have to remember that a lot of Ticketmaster's uh, event spaces are also linked to Live Nation because Live Nation uses those venues to then put on all of their concerts. So here's where I'm a little worried here. Um, it seems like that everybody's really excited about this vaccine, and believe me, I am. If you've watched any of my videos, I'm super excited. But when you start talking about tying things to digital identity, I get a little weary. I don't know. So there's a lot of varying views out here, and I don't really know what's the best route, but I know that like when you're talking about taking vaccines that are you know, coded um, and sort of, you know, encoded for you and then you're registered in a system and I don't know, does anybody else feel a little weary about that? Maybe it's just me, but I feel like there's a lot of, um, what's the best word to say? There's a lot of personal securities and boundaries that um, are sort of being overlooked for the greater good of taking a vaccine. And I do think that vaccines are good and I think that people should find a way to take a vaccine but taking government records of things and like you know basically cataloging 
who's taking things and who's allowed to do things and who's not, I, it just, it just kind of scares me a little bit. And I think it's okay to admit that, right? Anyway, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it because I'm always interested in everybody's opinion as it pertains to a subject as controversial as this one. So today's artist of the day is my neighbor. And no, I'm not talking about Fernando de Cias. I'm talking about my neighbor, Kim. She is an amazing artist and she barely puts any of her stuff out there. And I'm going to leave a link in the comments below so you can see some of the amazing artwork that she does. She's definitely one of the most creative people that I've ever met. And she's just so naturally talented at everything. She's an incredible songwriter. She's an incredible like visual artist and a painter and... I think that the world needs to know a little bit about her. So I'm going to leave a link uh, in the comments below for my neighbor, Kim. So Kim Fulton, you are the woman. Keep doing what you do. Love you as my neighbor. Until next time, I'm Sweet Deet. We'll talk soon.